Okay, so you guys really liked the Kowalski video, and I mean really liked it. So, as a somewhat follow-up to that video, I wanted to try one of the ideas that a good number of you suggested in the comments of that video, and that idea was, can you beat Fallout 3 while being chased by Mr. Burke? Now, much like last time, we have a few things to go over first just to explain how this all works. The idea is that as soon as I am able, I will trigger a sequence of events that will cause Mr. Burke to try and talk to the player character, and in doing so, we can essentially have him chase me across the entirety of the Capital Wasteland. The idea is, if he manages to speak to me, I will then feel the challenge and that will be the end of the run. Now, I read a lot of the feedback from last time, and one thing a lot of you were wondering was, how do I know if he is still following me? And this time, I answer that on two separate occasions by saving the game, briefly pausing the challenge, and then using the in-game wait feature to see if he appears. If he does, then great, the challenge is still working, and I can reload the save prior to pausing to continue on. If he doesn't appear, then I will load back to an older save until I find one where he's still chasing us. Like last time, fast travelling is forbidden, as it would make things far less interesting and a lot less challenging. And then one last thing, I saw some people asking if they could see the whole playthrough, as it was something they would love to see. So, the date this video is going up is Friday, May 21st, and the full playthrough should be going up on Sunday. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get started. The intro section of Vault 101 is always relatively the same, so here's the Cliff Notes version of it. I designed my build primarily around melee damage, as that's my preferred way to play when not under any restrictions by a challenge. I knocked out Butch and carried him to class because I had a change of heart, had a second change of heart three years later and caved in his and his mother's skulls with a baseball bat, Back to it. and then left the vault. Outside the vault and it was straight to Megaton. When I arrived I was lucky enough to encounter Doc Hoff, and because all travelling merchants carry all of their wares on them in Fallout 3, I promptly murdered him and his guard while Megaton security watched in horror. It's probably above their pay grade to deal with something like this. Doc Hoff, as you can imagine, had a wide assortment of drugs and drug accessories which were now mine for the taking. Once inside Megaton, we can begin setting out the challenge properly. Firstly, I talk to Lucas Sims to get the power of Adam Quest to defuse the bomb. From there, we want to head over to the saloon and talk to Mr. Burke, who will then give us, of course, the option to detonate said bomb. Now that we have this genocidal information, we can return to Lucas Sims and warn him about Burke. At which point he asks you to follow him back to the saloon where he will show us, and I quote, some wasteland justice. Yeah, he literally makes the biggest mistake in the book by turning his back on Burke, gets killed for it, but more importantly, this is where the challenge officially begins, as now Burke will begin slowly walking towards us to try and engage in conversation. <laughs> it's kinda like that one movie, it follows. I wonder if anyone else made that observation yet. Unlike Kowalski, however, Mr. Burke does actually just walk, so I doubt this will be as difficult, but that doesn't mean I don't have to be aware at all times. Oh, also something I should mention is that should Burke somehow get killed, this message will actually pop up on screen letting you know that his side of the Megaton quest is unavailable, which is of course good for me as it will let me know should someone or something manage to kill him. Once I leave Megaton I waited on a nearby overlook while keeping an eye on the entrance to the town to make sure that he is definitely still following us. After a few minutes I do spot him so we know that he can indeed leave Megaton. Now obviously much like last time, speed is the name of the game so not wanting to waste any unnecessary time I started heading west towards Smith Casey's garage to skip the first half of the main quest. Well, not more than two minutes into my journey and I got stuck in between this fallen tree and a rock. Seeing how fast travel is not allowed in this run, I legit thought that this was going to be the end already as I couldn't move and so it was inevitable that he would catch up to me in a few moments. In an incredibly ironic twist however, a would-be raider tried to mug me and got just close enough that I could use Vats to target him with my baseball bat and get myself unstuck from my current predicament. I then repaid him the only way I knew how. Continuing west, I made sure to pay closer attention to the area around me so that I would not fall prey once again to Todd Hart's funky 2008 level design. Even though, as I mentioned, Burke is much slower than Kowalski thanks to his Sunday stroll speed, I was still incredibly paranoid and looking over my shoulder nearly every minute or so. Like all of my Fallout 3 playthroughs, I ended up in Evergreen Mills on my way to Vault 112. Maybe I'm cocky, or maybe I'm an idiot, but not only did I decide to rest in a bed to heal my wounds, but I also decided that I would clear out the whole area of raiders because I wanted the terrible shotgun, which, despite its name, is in fact one of the most powerful weapons in all of Fallout 3. Clearing out the raiders isn't too difficult, it's just a little time consuming which honestly is probably worse now that I think about it. The raider merchant who actually has the gun we're after is not hostile so I make sure to take out everyone else before I attack him. Luckily for me I managed to find a sledgehammer, you know, as you do, and was able to use it in vats to quickly deal with Smiling Jack here before he got a shot off on us. I don't want to overhype this shotgun too much but it's highly likely that at this close range he would more than likely liquefy me if he got a shot off. On my way out of Evergreen Mills with my new toys in hand, I test out the shotgun on a few of the outer guard raiders, and yeah, it's very effective. I also learnt my lesson from my 32 pistol run and just avoided the small canyon as I know it's a minefield down there. I briefly got distracted once again just before I got into the garage as I wanted to test out my shotgun on three nearby outcasts. It worked very well as you can imagine. 
Remember at the beginning I mentioned that there was two points in which I paused the challenge? Well, this was the first one, as I just wanted to make sure he hadn't lost interest, as I was pretty far away from him by this point. So, I saved the game, waited, and after five in-game hours he caught up with me. I honestly thought it would have taken him longer, but I guess that's what I get for messing around Nevergreen Mills for so long. So, once I loaded back, I decided that I would need to get through Tranquility Lane as fast as possible, because if he was only 5 minutes behind me, it is entirely possible that he could make it inside the vault while I'm in the simulation. That is, of course, assuming that time passes normally in the wasteland while I'm in the simulation. Well, these plans were briefly put on hold, because this is Fallout 3 after all, so almost as soon as I entered the garage, the game crashed. This happened a fair few times, by the way. I won't mention them all here, but you'll see them all in the full playthrough video I was talking about earlier. Second attempt at getting to the vault and the game does not crash and I just go as quick as I can to my lounger and as soon as I'm in the simulation I just summon the power of the Chinese and then immediately leave. Well that isn't entirely true as I punched Braun in his stupid face thinking that nothing would happen as he had no control over me anymore. Turns out I was very wrong however. Next time I just ignore him, meet up with dad in the other simulation and then level up and take the child at Heart Park because this is still not the time to free the slaves. That comes later. I thought that maybe for once I would actually follow James to Rivet City but the man is so unrelentlessly bloodthirsty. If he even thinks there's something nearby that can be killed in the name of science he will drop everything he's doing and go beat it to death with his rusty tire iron. So after I dealt with Sam Warwick and I turned around just to see him standing there doing nothing, I decided that this would be much faster if I just ran on myself, so that's exactly what I did. Heading east I decided that I would shelve the shotgun for now as its condition decays rather quickly and I thought it made the most sense to save it for tougher enemies that I may encounter in the mid to late game of the story. It was around this point that I wandered through Andale and, well, you know, one doesn't just walk through Andale without paying the locals a visit. <laughs> Joking aside, I actually forgot that they had a ripper in their basement here, so of course I took that as it's one of the best melee weapons in the game, and seeing how I'm primarily a melee build, this should work wonders on the Enclave soldiers that I'll encounter soon. Right after finding the ripper, I got to test it out in some quadruplets, and just as I expected, it ripped right through them. Haha! <laughs> Ugh. Turns out the path I took to Rivet City was taking me along the bottom of the map, so I decided that I'd go to the Jefferson Memorial as clearing it out now couldn't hurt. I also thought it made the most sense to clear it out now because if I had to clear it later and then stay there for a while longer while helping with Project Purity, there's a high chance that Bert will catch up to me and the odds of invading him inside the confined spaces of the Jefferson Memorial are incredibly slim. Clearing out the memorial thankfully didn't take anywhere near as long as I thought it would, mostly in part to the sheer effectiveness of the sledgehammer I had. Honestly, it was proving to be a better find at Evergreen Mills than the terrible shotgun with the mileage I was getting out of it. Once I arrived outside Rivet City, much like Doc Hoff before him, Lucky Harith met his end at the hand of my greed. It was mainly the shotgun that he had that I wanted as it was going to be far too costly to repair my shotgun otherwise. I spent some time in the marketplace getting my equipment fixed as well as buying as many stim packs as I could afford, as the lack of fast travel and the risk of sleeping meant getting healed isn't always an option. I did get rather nervous standing around while Dad and Dr. Lee had their overly long conversation, but it turns out if I just spoke to Dad I could skip this part so that's not too bad. Now it was time to head back to Project Purity, but thankfully I knew a shortcut. Next attempt I make sure I'm not above a bunch of rocks and then safely swim my way to the memorial. Once inside, first things first, I murder all the non-essential scientists. Don't actually think this saves any time, but I did it anyway. Garza can't complain about his heart condition if he doesn't have one anymore. When the Enclave arrives, the shotgun did indeed make fairly short work of all of them. The only part that had me remotely worried was of course the glorified cutscene between your dad and Autumn, as the entire time I had the fear that Mr. Burke was just going to walk in through the door and ruin everything. I even did the glitch that lets you talk to Autumn to try and skip some dialogue to hurry things along. Making my way through the tunnels with Dr. Lee is rather easy as other than a few ghouls the majority of Enclave can just be ignored until you get to the Citadel. Speaking of the Citadel, once there this is where I paused the challenge for the second time. This time it was because I was worried that Burke may somehow have gotten stuck inside the Jefferson Memorial because if he was inside at this moment there was a chance that he may get trapped in there behind the energy fields. Well, turns out not only was he following me but he was also only two in-game hours away meaning that in about two minutes he would catch up to me. Once I loaded back I got into the citadel as fast as I could and I couldn't even describe how I was feeling during this exchange between Lee and Lyons knowing that with every second passing he was getting ever closer. As soon as I gained control I spoke to Rothschild because time is of the essence. I then went and got the information about Vault 87 from the terminal and just when I finished speaking to Rothschild about what I had found I turned around and... <gasps> He was now inside the citadel, if I didn't run as fast as I could or path just right I would feel the run. Thing is, at this point you need to wait for Rothschild to get down to the map before he tells you about Lamplight, but he only walks, so to make sure that I didn't get caught I had to angle myself behind Rothschild just right and push him down the stairs just to make him go a little faster. Thankfully this actually worked and I was able to go up the opposite staircase and double back round to the entrance and leave and just narrowly sidestep this demon. 
With very little time to spare, I began making my way towards Lamplight to kickstart the final part of the main quest. On the way there, I stopped off in Megaton to grab the Chinese officer sword in Jericho's house. I'm going to spoil this right now, this was nothing but a waste of time, as I only ended up using the damn thing a handful of times, as it just wasn't anywhere near as good as my sledgehammer, and especially not my ripper by this point. On this journey, I ended up strolling right past a talent company base, so I took the time to kill a couple of them for their armor, because as of this moment, I had no way to repair my leather armor, and would need something to protect myself from the approaching onslaught of super mutants I was soon to face in Vault 87. As mentioned earlier, I grabbed the child at Heart Park to gain easy access to the lamplight for obvious reasons. Okay, so truth be told, Murder Pass and Vault 87 were two of the areas I was most worried about, as the overabundance of mutants do wonders at slowing you down. This area is actually the reason behind why I initially decided on getting the terrible shotgun, because I knew I would need any help I could get to make my way through this as fast as possible. I did release Fox as well, of course, to help out, but since she actually isn't a companion here, she only walks towards the Gek and doesn't actually run behind you. Throwing caution to the wind, due to my lack of Radex or Radaway, I decided to retrieve the Gek myself. Luckily you can stand in this doorway here while the Gek is getting prepared to avoid taking any radiation damage. Once that was done I ran into the loving arms of the Enclave and got transported to Ravenrock. Assuming that no in-game time actually passes between getting flashed and awakening in Ravenrock, this is actually a huge help as it means I have just been transported relatively far away from Burke who was probably getting close to Lamplight if not already there. Regardless, I still don't want to waste any unnecessary time here and go about escaping the base as fast as possible. The Enclave soldiers at this point really aren't an issue. On the bright side, some of them also drop rippers, so I'm able to use them to repair my own for some extra damage, which is awesome. I did try to get Eden's self-destruct codes but lacked the ability to open small locks, but it turns out I didn't need it as I already had a high enough science skill to convince him to do it anyway. That's actually kind of strange as I didn't put any points into science this run other than when I took the bobblehead from Dr. Lee earlier. Never mind, it's not important as I quickly make my way outside and I'm glad that I only see Fox out here and no one else. I promptly repay Fox's kindness with a grenade and then begin the incredibly long walk from Ravenrock to the Citadel, which will basically have me travelling across the entire map. Once again, like the majority of my Fallout runs, I get jumped by an incredibly angry family of crabs and they very nearly kill me as I try to flee from them. I did manage to escape from them, but then, because I wasn't paying attention to where I was going, I accidentally walked into a radar outpost. This should have been easy, but I was now out of stim packs and they managed to cripple my leg, which is probably the worst thing that could have happened. I would honestly prefer if they just killed me. Well, no more than a minute later I got that wish as while I was trying to fend off a Yagwai, my shotgun broke in my hands and then it very easily finished me off. Well, one crash and a load back later and I decide that I'm going to take a safer path back to the Citadel that doesn't have me running through Death's Gauntlet. So I plan to basically go south back towards Vault 87 and Lamplight, then follow the same path I did earlier from Smith Casey's garage to the Citadel, as well as probably stopping off Megaton for some healing supplies. This journey was certainly safer, but no less... strange? It, it just works. Now, while heading south was an incredibly risky play in its own right, I was honestly morbidly curious to see if I could spot Burke from a distance, because as a lot of you pointed out before, it's when you lose sight of him that things become a lot more tense. I never actually managed to make it back to Little Lamplight because I got into too many fights with super mutants, raiders and bears, to the point where I only had a quarter of my health left and my head was crippled. After that, there was nothing too bad now that I was heading east towards Megaton, that is until I saw a freaking death claw just hanging around the area. Thankfully, I just about managed to sneak away, because let's be real here, there is literally no way that I'd be able to take him down or at the very least outrun him if he saw me. Before heading into Megaton, I paid Silver a visit for an easy 400 caps and then used said caps to get my health restored and radiation healed in Megaton, as well as a few other supplies before heading back towards the Citadel. On the way there, I also killed Grandma Sparkle, simply because if you take the key she has on her, you can get some good supplies from the fridge outside of her house. With that, we were pretty much back at the Citadel, so I went and started the final mission, the game crashed, and then I started it again. The march to the purifier is slow and boring, but this time it was also terrifying. I think I spent the majority of the time just scanning the area around me looking for anything that even remotely resembled a pinstriped suit. I was once again able to get more rippers during this part though, and since my repair skill was now at 100, I could make a seriously powerful ripper. So powerful in fact that it completely annihilated Colonel Autumn and his two Enclave guards in a few seconds. With the final fight over, I inserted the FEV virus, sort of sent lions to your death, finishing the run and proving that yes, you can indeed beat Fallout 3 while being chased by Mr. Burke. Now, if any of you are like me, you're probably curious as to how close he is right now. 
So, with the challenge over, I wake back up in the Citadel, thanks to the Broken Steel DLC, and then immediately head outside and wait until he reappears. Turns out, he was only about 3 minutes away, so he was probably not too far behind me when I was following Liberty Prime, which is scary to think about. Well, since the challenge is over, I finally put Burke to rest and then toss his body into the river to put an end to this once and for all. Regardless, that's going to be the end of this challenge video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving the video a like, and if you're interested in more challenges in the future, feel free to subscribe as I try to have one of these videos out every week. My name's Nurbit, stay safe everyone, I'll see you all in the next video.